Brave New World, Alashma. Car crashes, epic battles, cliffhangers, passionate kisses. Sounds like enough to keep us entertained for an afternoon. But the last thing we'd want is a lull in the action. So why does Aldous Huxley's boundary-pushing book, Brave New World, take two whole chapters off to uh, navel gaze? When John, aka the Savage, heads to the big city, he finds it full of identical clones controlled by drugs, sex, and genetic engineering. And he isn't even in Southern California. The brains of this operation is world controller Mustafa Mond, who likes to exile people to islands. John Smith, you're gone. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotta have a gimmick, right? When John and Mustafa finally meet in chapter 16, it's the perfect time for a showdown. Will there be an arm wrestling match or torture? Nah, instead these two main characters have a no-holds-barred knockdown drag-out chat. Why does Huxley put the brakes on for the rambling conversations in chapters 16 and 17? Is he getting paid by the word? Or was he influenced by multiple viewings of Spider-Man? With great power comes great responsibility. By Jove, that's it. Here's one thought. Huxley could be advertising his own beliefs. Brave New World predicts a future where knowledge is forgotten and replaced with slogans and instant gratification. Mustafa has well-reasoned arguments as to why independence should be suppressed. But is John right to desire freedom with all its flaws? Or maybe these chapters were a shout out to the bard. Brave New World references over 15 of Shakespeare's plays. The Tempest gives the book its name, which comes to mean different things to John over time. Brave new world. Brave new world. Brave new world. The Tempest also helps John in matters of love when he's trying to get rid of Lenina. You shall never melt mine honor. Chapters 16 and 17 may also be a shout out to a technique that all the cool playwrights use, the philosophical dialogue. Philosophical dialogue breaks down a topic through a conversation between two characters. Through Mustafa and John, Huxley can look at art, science, and religion from totally different viewpoints, kind of like playing yourself at chess. Philosophical dialogue lets an author make two arguments at the same time, and in this case, Huxley really wants John to win. So why does Huxley slow it down for chapters 16 and 17? Is he using Brave New World as a billboard for his beliefs? Or is he proving his status as Shakespeare's BFF? Come up amongst yourselves. Give us some long-term gratification. Let us know what you think. Ha <laughs> ha.